Hi. Hi. Okay, my name is Bonnie King, and I'm going to talk about doing um, general purpose I.O. on the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. Um, it's based on an ARM, it's an ARM-based Broadcom stock in there. It has HDMI out and USB and integrated network, uh, network interface and all that stuff. Um, so the people behind the Raspberry Pi, it's actually a UK-based nonprofit called the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And um, they created this to basically promote education and um, specifically computer science education. Um, they wanted to create something akin to like the Timex Sinclair back in the day and the BBC Micro and stuff like that, um, that so many people learn programming on um, in the 80s and 90s. So people are using it for lots of different things. Um, there's a pretty hefty GPU in it, which um, a lot of people are using XBMC and uh, using it as a media, media center. Um, people are doing parallel processing on it, which I think is kind of cute. And um, of course, they're using an education, which is the, the mandate of the foundation. Um, but they're also doing a lot of really cool electronics projects. Um, so um, the coolest thing for me probably about the Raspberry Pi is the uh, low-level I.O. that it exposes, and this is exposed on this header right here. Um, so you can basically hook stuff up to it, and you can uh, do all kinds of like really cool blinky stuff. So this talk is going to be basically like the hello world of uh, GPIO, which is like making you know, an LED blink. So this is the, the header um, that's actually, well, it's common to all the revisions of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can see there's a bunch of pins on there. They all have different uh, purposes. They're all configurable for different things. Um, you can just do, uh, you can do um, a lot of, like the serial interfaces, UART, SPI, I squared C. Um, and you can also just use it for uh, GPIO, which is um, basically taking, uh, detecting a high or low voltage on the pin, um, which would be a digital signal. And um, you can also do the other direction and um, emit a voltage on the pin. So um, this lends itself well to do like a lot of physical computing stuff, um, and a lot of people are use. Uh, there's like various boards to do this. Um, Arduino's one of them. Um, but the cool thing about the Pi is that well, I'm a Linux sysadmin, so um, obviously I already know Linux. I already know Python. You don't have to use Python on it, but um, it's really powerful because you can use Python. You can even use Bash. Um, you can use a REPL, which is something they can't really do easily on the Arduino. Um, so basically, there are two, well, there's a bunch of ways you can interact with the GPIO. Um, there's rpi.gpio, um, doesn't support SPI, I squared C, PWM yet, um, works on both Python 2 and 3. Uh, there's a company called Quick2Wire, which is, um, they're a startup, I think they're making, trying to make expansion boards and stuff like that. They also have an API, which is Python 3 only. So I'm going to talk about the uh, GPIO, rpi.gpio library specifically. So um, if you want to get something running, you're going to pip install it, import it. Then you're going to choose your pin numbering. So you actually have two options here. Um, so there's the pin numbering that's on the actual IC um, in the, the Pi. Um, that's what most people are using, and most of the peripherals that people are coming out with are using that pin numbering. So that would just be gpio.bcm, which is, stands for Broadcom. There's also the board numbering, which uh, seems to be not really that relevant at this point. So, but that's just, it's kind of just an arbitrary thing. It's how you're going to address the pins. So if I want to set up an output on uh, the pin 17, then I just run this gpio.setup method, um, give it the pin number and the direction. And then to do the output, it's that easy. GPO.high is actually just an integer. It's one. Um, and that will emit a 3.3 volt signal on that pin. So for input, kind of the same thing. We're going to choose a pin and then set up the direction. And then to grab the input, um, this function will return true when there's a voltage on the pin. It's actually a little more complicated than that, but um, this is the most simplistic use of this. So right here I have, um, it's actually a Geiger counter. Um, and it's hooked up to the spreadboard. I have some marbles with, uh, that are doped with uranium. And so this is, <laughs> this is actually just flashing um, once for every click on the Geiger counter. You can kind of see if I move it closer. I don't know if you can see, but um, yeah. So this is basically the code that's running that. It's super simple. It's like just totally dumb. Um, I have two LEDs, but this is basically what it's doing. So here's another th little project I help work on. Um, it, uh, there's a web interface, uses Bottle, um, 
there are some lights in the, in the pumpkin. When you click a button on this interface, it plays scary noises and flashes lights and stuff like that. So that's it. Um, if you want to learn more about this, I definitely recommend um, Autofruit. They sell the pies, and they also um, sell all kinds of peripherals and stuff like that. And uh, you can find tutorials there. There's uh, the Raspberry Pi blog, and there's a community on Element 14. And thank you very much.